Welcome, you guys. Um, this is uh, what's your what's your flipping problem, right? Little New York tone on that. What's your flipping problem? So Amber and I wanted to do a session that we did every Thursday at five o'clock. So we are just starting. This is the first time ever done it. We will not be here next Thursday because next Thursday, in fact, is Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. But uh, but we're here today. We got a few of you that have sent messages in to us. You sent private messages in, and uh, we are uh, thankful for that. And so we're here to answer any questions you have about flipping, real estate investing, how we manage our lives, how we balance things out, you know, what we do, um, anything you want to know about Amber and I and that might help you in your business or your journey or even an entrepreneur question, we're here to help you with that as well. So, um, you know, certainly we specialize in real estate investing. That's what we do. We really, we really specialize in three areas, right? We specialize in flipping. Um, we specialize in wholesaling houses. Uh, and we also specialize in rentals, both long-term and short-term. Those are the areas we sort of specialize in in real estate. And so... Um, so I got a few questions today. So let me go ahead and, and read the questions that came in via uh, DM. And if you have any questions and you join here, uh, I'll keep an eye here. If any questions uh, pop in, I'd be happy to uh, answer them live. So let's get started. So uh, Mike had wrote in and said, uh, what are the best opportunities in 2021 based on where you think the market will be? Good question. Good. And the question from Mike is, what are the best opportunities in 2021 based on where you think the market will be? First off, my crystal ball is broken. I don't know. Uh, this has been a crazy year. It's always tough to predict any any market, anything. And so I'd be lying if I said that I knew what was going to happen because no one knows what's going to happen. But what I think is going to happen, what, what history says, is that we are certainly due in the market for a reset. And what I mean is the market is due, it's been 13 years since the crash of, you know, 2007, 2008. So we are due for a hard reset. Now we're having a, a change in the political party. That will probably help to, uh, to make that go faster. That's what a lot of the experts have been saying. And so um, what that means is that eventually the money that's been given out for COVID and all of that, will eventually start to go away. Now, I don't know, you know, it may get stretched down through 2021. This may go on for, I hope not much longer. My God, we all have fatigue, don't we? But it's going to keep going on. And so where there'll be opportunity is there's going to be people that go through tough times. There are people that lost their jobs. There's a lot of people who have lost their jobs. Um, hello, Mandel. And um, uh, there are people that have lost their jobs. And because of that, people lose their homes, unfortunately. And so when that happens, we as investors have an opportunity to help them get out of their situation and profit for ourselves in the process. That's really what we do. So the opportunity is going to be that there's going to be, no matter what happens, no matter what the market is, right now the market is hot. I mean, every, every area in the country is hot, hot, hot. Interest rates are very low. So people are buying houses like crazy right now. And so, um, hey, Sherry. Um, and so what I would uh, recommend is that you start preparing yourself for the fact that there's going to be houses that come available um, that are going to be at a discount. There'll be pre-foreclosures. There'll be distressed properties that people have to get out of. There's always the tried and true, right? There's always one steady um, source of new business, and that is estates and divorces and death and or disease, right? All that, all that stuff goes on. Job losses, all those steady things. Those are always happening in any economy, good or bad. They're always happening because life just it's a circle of life, right? It just goes on. And that's what happens. So I'd be looking for those houses. So in 2021, again, the question for Mike was, what are the best opportunities in 2021 based on where you think the market will be? And then the opportunities are going to be in foreclosed houses and trying to buy those houses before they go into foreclosure, right? So that's really where you want to try and focus is getting those deals. Because Amber and I will always preach and tell you, if you ever come to one of our workshops or whatever, we'll always tell you that your money is found in off-market deals, right? The money's found in off-market deals. So the more you can find those, the faster you can find those off-market deals, um, you know, before somebody else finds them, that's where the money is for you as a real estate investor. And there'll be a lot of rentals too. People will be out of their homes. When people are out of homes and there's foreclosures, then there becomes more rentals, right? So it's, uh, um, oh, Bob, I'm competing with Fossey on TV, huh? Dr. Fossey on again? Oh boy, here we go. So, uh, hey, Bob, I think you're down in Florida. Lucky son of a gun. Okay, so... Um, 
So that's what I think. I think, you know, we'll look at look at foreclosures, look at um, distressed properties coming up. That's always a staple, but I think you're going to see more and more of those as time goes on in 2021. Again, I want to, for those of you guys who are just joining us now, uh, the question was, you know, what are the best opportunities in 2021 based on where you think the market will be from Mike? And it's, uh, hey, Mike, there you are now. Um, and so uh, the, que- the, the answer is, is that look for those distressed properties. That's where it's going to be. And prepare yourself because eventually the market's going to reset. And when it does a hard reset, you really want to be, you know, to use a surfing metaphor, you want to be out in the water and you want to be paddling. Because when the wave hits, you want to ride the wave. You don't want to get crushed by the wave. Right, so I would make sure that that you are already riding when the wave hits, and away you go. All right, next question is, uh, and by the way, guys, you, you, you guys who are just joining, if you have any questions that you wanted to uh, to throw out there, please by all means um, just throw them in the chat box. And when I get to it, I will uh, I will do that. I think my beautiful wife is on there watching too. So in case I in case I miss a question, I'm trying to get it to reinstate fields for the longest, and I need help. Uh, Oh, I'm trying to get in the real estate field for the longest time. I need help. So Mandel, not to not to toot our own horn, but please go to homeflippingworkshop.com. Go to homeflippingworkshop.com. We have a three-day workshop coming up on December 4th through the 6th. And um, that's what we're, we're there to teach all, all this for three days. It's 59 bucks. So go to homeflippingworkshop.com, and we'd love to have you there, Mandel. So thank you. I wasn't doing that for a plug right now. I just you asked, so I'm, I'm telling you. Um, next, so... Uh, Steve says, um, what's your best advice for someone starting in the real estate market? Huh. What's your best advice for someone starting in the real estate market? Oh, there's so much advice to give. Where do I even start? I would say that it's a marathon, not a sprint. I think people think they're going to get into real estate and make a million dollars tomorrow because of all the gurus out there saying that. No, I'm not one of those gurus. Amber and I preach that what we do is hard work, but it's worth it. So it's it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint. You got to remember that when you get in here, it takes time to build any business. And yes, you can flip a house and make thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars or more in your first year. You can totally do that. Matter of fact, we teach our students how to go out and flip two houses in their first year to shoot for a hundred thousand dollars in their first twelve months. But it still takes time, right? And it does take getting kicked around. And that last, hey, Aaron, how are you? Oh, good. You're going to be at the event. Good. It'll be fun to have you there. And so, um, again, the best advice for someone getting started in real estate market is just remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. And take your time. Uh, have your goal. I mean, you've got, you got to make fast moves. But remember, you're building a business. And I would also encourage you to remember this. Flips, so wholesales, if you don't know, a wholesale is when you, uh, very simply, when you um, sign up a house to buy and then you sell that contract to another cash investor, right? That's what wholesaling is. And that's a great way to make a living. It's called linear income. So you do that work one time, you get paid one time. Now, the next thing is flipping. Same thing with flipping. You buy a house, you fix it, you renovate it. You know, you can make 30, 40, 50, $100,000 on a flip. You can definitely do that. But when you're done with that flip, you have to go find your next flip. And here's the advice I give you in real estate. Do what we did not do, and that's get into rentals sooner than later. Because rentals pay the bills month after month after month. And even though you may not get that sexy big check up front, you know, having that monthly income that comes in month after month while you sleep because people pay their rent is powerful, right? And everybody also do, we do a lot of Airbnbs this past year. We've added uh, seven or eight to our portfolio this year. So that's been another great thing that we do. So, um, you know, get that monthly income coming in because that pays the bills every month. It's pretty cool. All right. Uh, Carly says, oh, this is a loaded question. How do I know if I can trust a contractor as I have all <laughs> I've heard all kinds of horror stories? <laughs> there we go. So again, Carly says, how do I know if I can trust a contractor as I have all I've heard all kinds of horror stories? Well, Carly, they're all all kinds of horror stories. That's really what it boils down to. Now, contractors get very mad when they hear us talk about it, but I'll tell you from our perspective, we've been through hundreds and hundreds of contractors over the years for for a variety of reasons. We've done over 700 deals, so we've just been through a lot of contractors. We have a project manager now that runs those contractors. And, you know, you don't know if you can trust a contractor until you get to to work with them. Like anything in life, you don't know. You can do your due diligence beforehand by doing a few things, though. You can definitely do a good interview process when you meet them. You can definitely not show weakness. Um, uh, You know, try your best to get referrals. Find people that have referrals. And then go drive to the referrals. If they say, well, I'm working on a job right now over on Orchard Street or whatever it might be, 
go by the job site. You know, even talk to that person. Knock on the door after hours and say, how are you enjoying this contractor? Get a good feel for who they are. And there are some good ones. I want to be clear about that. It's just, there's a lot of bad ones. But there are some good ones, right? It's just tough to find the good ones. Because truthfully, people that have good ones, people that have good contractors, typically aren't so quick to give you that name. Because they want to keep that contractor in their pocket, especially if they're doing a lot of, of work, right? So flippers kind of keep those, those names close to their chest because they're so hard to find. But here's what I would tell you. Once you find a good one, try your best to keep them as long as you can. Amber and I have found that a lot of contractors have a shelf life to work for a flipper. You know, because they kind of come in and they're, they're sometimes four, five, six jobs. And they're like, eh, I don't know, this feels like a job to me. And they like to go kind of go from from um, from person to person that they work for. But we've had a good run for the past couple of years with, with, a, with a few contractors that have been good to us. And uh, we have some great relationships there too. So it is possible, but take care of them when you find them. And there are horror stories and there can be horror stories. But, it you know, welcome to life. That's what it is. So it's part of the game. All right. Hope that answers your question, Carly. If you guys have any more questions, by the way, please feel free to put uh, just type it there in the chat box. I'll keep my eye for it. And if you like what you're hearing today, give me a heart, give me a give me a like, give me something. That'd be great. We're gonna do this live every single Thursday, except for next Thursday because it's Thanksgiving, right? So um, just let me know that you're listening out there and give me a give me a, a thumb or a, a heart. That'd be great. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, Chelsea. Chelsea says, uh, what made you, Glenn, decide to get into real estate to begin with? Well, Chelsea, I was broke. Needed money. I just needed money. That's what one thing we had to have was money. We had to figure out how to make large chunks of cash quickly. And that's really how I got into real estate. I always wanted to be in real estate to buy rentals and build it the long way. And at my workshop, I go into, I go into great detail of my story and kind of, you know, I, I've been through some very, very hard times, but I wanted to do rentals. And yes, it's a couple hundred bucks a month and you have to start to build up your, your business. Well, Amber, when we first met, Amber was like, well, I like to design stuff. And I'm like, I don't like to design anything. I just want to make money on it. Right. And she's like, well, I love to design. So that marriage of, I need to make money. Cause I was actually $80,000 in credit card debt going through divorce and Amber loving to design, and I love to put deals together, we found a great business relationship on top of a great marriage, on top of a great partnership and best friendship. We were able to find that we both worked well together because we did different things. And those two things put together made us a good, a good team. So again, um, we got into real estate investing. Honestly, we always tell people out of pure desperation. That's how we got into real estate investing was because we had to get into real estate investing. We didn't have a choice. And we had to figure out how to make large chunks of cash. And don't forget, we did it back in 2007 when the market was, was tanking. We did our first deal in 2007 and sold it in 2008. And we, the next one we got a loan for from the bank. And then after that, um, we lost all of our funding because all the banks shut down and we had nothing. So we had to figure out how to go. And this, this leads into my next question, actually. But um, we... Uh, we had to make money, so we had to keep pushing forward hard in this thing. So I guess that's what I want to tell you about that. So um, we had to make money, and that's what got us started. And, and we, w once we flipped a house, we made seventeen thousand on our first deal, made like thirty six thousand on our next deal, and we realized, hey, this we can make some money at this. And here we are, seven hundred houses later. Which that sounds insane when I hear it. Just so you know, that sounds crazy to me, but it it, it just is. Over time, right? I said I said when we started this today that over time you can build a business. And so as you build a business over time, well, you start to accumulate uh, a track record. And that's what we've done. And now our company does over 100 deals a year. Okay. And by the way, you are, you are watching uh, What's Your Flipping Problem? Our new show we're doing every Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time called What's Your Flipping Problem? And if you have any problems about real estate that you want to ask, doesn't have to be about flipping, it can be about rental, anything. Uh, Michael, where do I suggest, where do, I, where do you suggest I look for real estate uh, for sale. Another great question. So in a hot market, they're tougher to find. Right now it's a hot market, so it's very tough to find. You want to look for off-market deals, so you want to try and find people that are in distress. Something simple you can do that doesn't cost any money is to drive your neighborhood. Look for houses that are, um, in the summertime, when the grass gets high, right, that's how you know a house might be vacant. Knock on the neighbor's door and just say, just out of curiosity, do you know what's going on with this house next door? Do you think they might want to sell? Right? That's a simple way that doesn't cost you any money. You can go down to your local tax department if they're ever open through COVID now, but you can go to your local tax department and find out who's behind in taxes. They actually post that in the newspaper that you can find too if you, if you use a newspaper anymore, but you can uh, look that up online. But you can look up 
uh, government offices and find out who's behind on their taxes. Because if you're falling behind in taxes, there's a good chance you might want to sell your house. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to guarantee to sell your house, but you, they, that you might want to sell your house, right? Those are two different ways that I give you that you can go out and find properties that, um, that doesn't cost you any money to find. Now, our company now, we do a lot of marketing, right? We do direct mail, we do TV advertising, we do all that. But we started by going out and looking for houses and not really knocking on the neighbor's doors and saying, hey, you know, do you think that person wants to sell their house? And that's how we bought a few of our houses. That's how we got started. Um, and we also, we also, the third way I'll give you is we networked. So we networked and found people that, like I talked to our mail carrier and said, listen, if you ever know of a house that is for sale, um, that you think for myself, please let me know. And she actually let us know about our first two deals. So she let us know because, you know, mail carriers, they know stuff. They deliver mail, right? So they have a, they have a good idea what's going on in the house. So uh, so that's how we find it. And that's, Mike, I hope that helps. But that's uh, that's how, that's three ways to find houses for sale. All right. Okay. Uh, last question I've got is uh, Mark. Mark said, what is hard money lending? What is hard money lending? Okay, so the answer to your question, your flipping question, is uh, hard money lending is a, a group of people. It's, a, it's an organized way to borrow money at a higher rate. It's not the mob, right? You have a, a normal bank as your regular bank that you would borrow from to go borrow your, buy your house or buy your car, take out a vacation loan or whatever it might be, right? That's where you go to your bank for those kind of rates. A hard money lender is a group of people that get together and say, we're willing to loan money out at a higher rate because it's riskier for us. Because they're going to loan you money, right? They're going to loan you money on a house that is going to be a little bit of a risk for them because it needs to work. So they're going to loan you money. Now, those rates are usually anywhere from 10 to 14% and 2 to 3 points. A point is 1% of the loan. So a hard money lender is there to loan you money on a short-term basis at a high interest rate. They, they do care about your credit, but not nearly as much as a bank does. Matter of fact, they really care about the house and the value of the house and the deal more than they care about your personal credit. Now, if you're in a, if you're in a live bankruptcy, you can get funding, but it gets tougher. But that's what a hard money lender is. That's what that's what a hard money lender, that's what a hard money lender does. So um, I see a couple new people out here. So those of you guys who are joining us, uh, you're watching. Uh, What's your flipping problem? It's a show we're going to do every Thursday at five o'clock Eastern time, where we're going to answer all of your real estate questions. Amber will mostly join me. She just couldn't be here today. So if you have any questions. Um, Please feel free. I just answered five questions on here so that people sent me a DM. You can actually uh, ask your question right now live if you'd like to. So if you have any questions about flipping, please let me know. Throw it in the chat box, and I'd be more than happy to uh, to answer that question for you. Got a question. Oh, there we go. Got a question. Got a question. I'm glad my team's doing their thing. So what made you get into real estate uh, to begin with? Well, I, I had said that earlier. So, you know, I, we, we got into it, uh, Mike strictly because we were broke and we had to find a way to make extra money. And that's what I told everybody before. We had to make extra money and we had to find a way. I didn't know how else to do it legally. I didn't know besides being a drug dealer, I wasn't sure how to make a lot of money, but I knew I had to, to make a lot of money fast. And so we knew that real estate was a tried and true profession and people have been doing it for, for generations back since the Egyptians pyramids. I don't know what it was. There's always been, there's, um, you know, there's always been real estate for, for as long, far back as we can remember. So it's really been, um, it's, it's the best way for average people like us to really create wealth. That's what real estate investing has done for us. So that's how we got into real estate investing and that's, uh, that's why we do it. So any more questions you guys have for our new show, What's Your Flipping Problem? Again, it's our first time doing this, our first time doing a live show. So if you have any questions about flipping, about holding real estate, Short-term, long-term Airbnbs. If you have any questions about Airbnbs, be happy to answer that question. Again, we've been making a big, uh, a big push on that this year. So if you have any questions, please let me know. More than happy to answer those questions for you and do what I can to help you. I'll give you just another minute if anybody wants to answer any, ask any questions. Feel free to do it now. Otherwise, we will uh, we'll call that a wrap. So if you guys like today, give me some thumbs, give me some hearts. I'd love that. If you found value today, that's great. That's what we want to do. So, oh, good question. 
So people are sending me private messages while I'm doing this. So I think, I'm not sure if they're, I get all kinds of weird stuff on my phone. I got private messages. Uh, and Michael, you guys say, do you think now is a good time to get into real estate? Yeah, so here's the saying in real estate. The best time to get into real estate was 10 years ago. The second best time is now. That's how. That's the answer to, is this a good time to get into real estate? There's never a bad time to get into real estate. I don't care what market. That's the cool part about this. Whether it's a Whether it's a hot market or a slow market, Amber and I started in a slow market, so all we knew was slow. Now that we're in a hot market, it's it's quite nice, right? But you can definitely do more. In a hot market, you can't find as many houses because other people are doing it. In a slow market, all the all the weekend warriors sort of jump out, and there's lots of deals for you to buy, right? So that's how that works. When the economy gets tough, which I believe it will, sometime in the next year. Now, again, if they keep pumping money into the economy, then no, but more shutdowns, who knows what's going to happen. This obviously 20, 2020 has been an insane year. I know we're all hoping 2021 is going to be a less insane year, but who knows? This is just so out of hand. It's ridiculous. But in our world, we have tried to find a way to make, um, you know, lemonade out of lemons. And we have found a way our companies have all gone virtual and it's been an amazing um, journey for us. I don't love staying home with my kids, going to school, that kind of stuff. That's that's something. But um, but the business side of things has been great for us. And again, the market's hot. So I think now is a great time to get into real estate, get learning now. I think, again, I said this earlier uh, when we first started the show, you want to be swimming. You want to be swimming fast when the wave hits. If you're going to surf, you know, even if you don't surf, you just body surf, right? If you ever went body surfing in the ocean, you've got to be running and you've got to be moving when that wave hits and you catch the wave and you ride it. The people that are standing still in the in those big waves just get knocked over. You can't just stand there and take a wave. Well, the same thing with real estate investing. If you are swimming, if you're out there doing it, you're grinding, you're doing your thing, you will get picked up by the wave and stuff just happens. So, Robert Tibbins, looking at a property that's small, 515 square feet and in, and in poor shape, but on a double lot. How would you value this? <sighs> small houses are tough. I just tell you, for a long time, Robert, Amber and I did not, um, Amber and I did not, let me, uh, saw, keep that, let me see, flipping requires real estate license. Uh, no, it does not. That's a simple answer. Let me, let me give that, does not require a real estate license. Robert, back to your question on the 515 square foot house. Small is tough. Small is very tough. Um, Amber and I had a house we did many years ago in Rotterdam and we, Amber made it look beautiful. It's a two bedroom house, 800 square feet. We could not sell that thing for the life of us for what we wanted. We ended up having to sell it for like twenty five or thirty thousand less than we thought, even though it looked beautiful. It had small bedrooms, and you can talk yourself into it by saying, "Oh, somebody will live here. Oh, somebody loved this house. If I was single, I'd love this house. Oh, if I was a small family, I'd love this house." But just because you talk yourself into it doesn't mean that someone else is going to. Now, when a market's hot, um, I would consider a house like that to try to wholesale it. See if you can let somebody else take on the risk, because in wholesaling, there's no risk. When you flip, there's risk involved. When you wholesale, there is no risk involved. So I would strongly consider on that house, Robert, to look at um, doing a wholesale deal on it just to see if somebody wants the lot. If the house is livable, the, the strange thing about the market right now is some people like those tiny houses, right? There was a little craze that went through. Some people like that. So it's possible, possible. But it's pretty risky. And Amber and I have a rule of thumb. Under under a thousand square feet, we rarely matter of fact, we we just lost out. We did one of our Facebook lives did a few a uh, few weeks ago. We went and did a Facebook Live. And then somebody who watched us do Facebook Live went and bought the house and it was fine because we didn't want it. But we put a bid in on it actually and then uh, but I bid pretty low and this other guy bought it. And I you know, right now in the hot market you might be lucky, but five hundred and fifteen feet. Gosh, I mean, that's a, that's a very, very small piece of property. So I would be extra cautious with that, Robert. Um, when you your real question was, how do I value this? Land is a tough one. You know, if it's a double lot, here, here's where the value might be. If you have a double lot situation, if it's already on two separate deeds, right? If it's already on two separate deeds, Michael, thank you, buddy. Glad you'll be back for the next live. Um, if it's on two separate deeds, you can buy the house, Right, and then you can um, you can subdivide the land and sell that as a building lot. So that's sometimes if it's on two separate deeds. You know, I'm sorry, 
If it's on two separate deeds, you don't have to subdivide the land. You can just buy the house and then sell off the, the lot. We've done that before. If not, you have to subdivide, and that'll cost you a few thousand dollars. So again, there's possibilities, but look for every option in it, but it all comes down to what you pay for it. If you pay too much for it, it doesn't matter, right? You have to get your money out, so. All right, well, guys, it is 529. We're gonna end the call now, live call. So you've been watching uh, What's Your Flipping Problem? And uh, Amber and I are here to answer any questions you have. Again, if you like us, please hit the like button. Give us a thumbs up on there. Give us a heart if you like it, whatever. And uh, we'll, we will not see you next Thursday, but we'll see you the following Thursday uh, for another episode of What's Your Flipping Problem. So get your questions ready. You can DM us. You can put it on the, on the, uh, on the post to go out about this. And, or you can just come here and ask questions live. And we would absolutely love to uh, answer all of your flipping and real estate uh, questions. So, all right. With that, I am out of here. See you guys. Hope you enjoyed today. <laughs>